You probably have heard of machine learning. A Google search turns up about 1 billion matches. Even if you look at the news only, there are 50 million articles. You've probably heard of Lee Zedol versus DeepMind, a game of the century where the machine finally beat human on this game of Go that is supposed to be unbeatable. You might have heard of Singularity, the moment when machines take over the humanity and wondered if it's going to come true or not. Up until now, you had to hear about it and just wonder about it and ask other people. But now, you can actually experience machine learning yourself. Welcome to our hands-on machine learning course, where you do machine learning with your own data. So what is machine learning after all? In machine learning, you don't tell computers what to do. Instead, you give examples of it, and then the computer will figure out what to do from your example. For example, here you are giving an example what letter twos, number twos look like. So the number twos look like this, or it could look like this. It could look like uh, this. They all look different, but you are saying all these are twos. You are giving the uh, keys to it. Is this, call, this is called supervised learning. And then you train the computer on it. So this is called training. So it's getting trained. And then it is supposed to be trained. Is it really trained? Let's find out. So I'm going to give this weird looking letters here and then ask what these numbers stand for. For us, it's obvious, but the computer, this is a difficult task. And here are the answers. So he thinks these are one, two, three, four. Oh, he thinks this is seven. In a way, it looks like seven, doesn't it? It thinks this is zero. In a way, it does look like zero. So we are getting strange answers. The reason is we didn't have enough data of training. But nonetheless, this is the idea of machine learning. Give examples, and then it will learn from the examples. It doesn't have numbers and characters. You could give pictures, for example. You could have this uh, mythical beasts, griffins, centaur, dragon, and unicorn. You cannot describe what they are, but you give pictures of this. You just give enough of them, and then this will learn what they are supposed to look like. So I'm going to train them here. Shift, enter. So it's processing it, and it's training it. OK, it got trained. So now I'm going to ask it. Look at this. This it has never seen before. It's not a picture that it was in one of them, right? And neither was this. It's not in there. And this was not there. This is not there. And I ask all four of them at the same time what they are. It will answer me as this. It got it wrong. I think this is supposed to be Griffin. And this is supposed to be, actually, I do not know. So let me train again. And then let me ask again as well. OK, still is giving me these answers. So unicorn, I, I know, is right. But these are not right. But this is, as, as you can see, it's not perfect. But this is, again, the idea. If you had more of them, it would have gotten more accurate answers. You can do a statistical analysis. For example, Titanic data, the passengers that were in the ship and then how they survived. For example, data set, if I see a random one of them, is this. Typically, the page, this um, passenger was on the first class and the age was two and was female. What happened to that patient passenger? Died. If I wanted to see another one, for example, 30th patient passenger, first class, 28-year-old, male, and survived. So can you predict how they would fare in the data? So here's the data, some of them, randomly chosen 10. That's what they look like. So what we do is that we do, again, train it. You just give an example. We don't say what they are, what, they are, what they're supposed to do. We just give the facts and train it and it gets trained and then then you can ask for example the if it's third class passenger of 10 year old female what is the probability that the passenger survived the pass the uh, probability 70 percent so you can make a function out of it then you can actually make a graph of the survivability of the titanic passengers these are first class female these, these are the ages. So the older you are, the less likely you are to live. But being female and the first class is a good thing. If you're on the third class, you're, you're male on the third class, then regardless of your age, you are not likely to survive. And most, if you're zero year old, then your survivability is 20%. After that, it's downhill. So you can do this kind of a statistical analysis with the data you have. 
using machine learning. In unsupervised learning, you do not tell the computer what they are, but you simply give the data and ask it to group similar things here. For example, I have some cat's pictures, I have cars and chairs, and then you just give it to the to machine and have them group them similar things together based on its own opinion. Let's do it. What does it produce? It produces this picture where the cats are together, chairs are together, and cars are together. Why do we need this? These could be images that you do not understand. For example, these could be all cells images, some of them cancerous, some of them healthy. You may not be able to tell them, but if you give this, uh, give these pictures to the computer, it may be able to group them, giving you an insight. Or suppose you are colorblind and you are supposed to group similar colors together. What do you do? You ask it to do it for you and you will say these are similar, these are similar, and these are similar. Now, if you ask it to plot the, uh, them based on their similarity, and they will do so. These are similar colors, these are similar colors, and these are similar colors. We have two eyes because we need them to perceive depth. What if you have just one picture? This is like seeing from one eye only. Mathematica, using this uh, net model, is able to perceive depth from a single picture. For example, here is the image. 3D image of the face that it computed. Is it correct? Let's paint this picture over this 3D model to see if it is. So I'm going to do this here. And then we get this here. Now this seems to be just uh, another picture, but take a look. If I click here and rotate it, I'm able to see this face from different angle. This time let's get artistic. This is the picture you took and this is the painting you like. Can you transfer this painting style into this picture? The answer is yes. Here it is. So we have this dog's picture painted in Van Gogh style. This time, let's try to have some random picture of famous paintings and have their styles transferred to this dog here and see what it looks like. And this is the output. So this Picasso's painting became made this uh, Picasso like dog's picture and Van Gogh's looks like this. You can see each transfer, each style was faithfully transferred here. You don't have to just watch this. You could put your own picture here and you can put your own favorite painting here and you will be able to get these images yourself. You can use pattern recognition to find out what's in the picture. For example, here's a picture of the uh, Africa savanna here. You can do image cases to find out what's in it. There are elephants and zebras in it. You can do a bounding box to find out where they are, and then you can paint over to see exactly where the elephants and zebras are. You can tell they found the uh, overlapping images accurately. Machine learning can find out where the faces are in the picture. For example, when you are given a picture like this, you can tell it to find the faces, and it will find them for you. Then you can find the landmarks, that is where the eyes are and the um, lips are, then you can use it to find them and align the faces so that they will be the same size. The eyes are at the same place and the lips are at the same place. Then you are able to merge them into a single picture and have them transition from to one to the other. You don't have to just watch this. You could put your own picture with your friends in it. Then you will see one friend's face morphing into another's. Machine learning can find depth from a single image. For example, here is a majestic picture of a mountain. You can ask it to find the depth from it, and here it is. Black means it's close, white means it's far, which is correct, isn't it? This part is close, so it's dark. And then this part is further, it's gray. And sky is far, so it's white. Now, this is hard to see, so we are going to paint them over. So we are going to do this here. And then... This is the picture, you can see, but it's kind of hard to see. So why don't we paint over this mountain's picture over this 3D shape here, and then we get this. So from a single picture, you can get this kind of a 3D shape of the mountain, which I find is amazing. Let's make it a little bigger for the full impact. This machine learning was trained on many famous pictures so therefore, when it sees one, and it can match with the one it, see, it has seen before and know where that is. So here it is, a picture of pyramids, but you don't have to use this one. You can use picture of any landmark near where you live, 
put in here and then do this here then it will tell you the latitude and longitude of the location you don't have to take his word for it you can ask Mathematica to draw the map for that location where is it it will draw for you it's in Egypt Mathematica can recognize characters for example in this image we have a highway sign indicating those you can ask Mathematica saying that it's English and then find what those characters are it will tell you I am East F where is it I think it's trying to read this part and failed but it read Kansas Des Moines Des Moines is said wrong and then is Kansas City is spelled wrong but it's trying to find what they are all right and then let's ask where that was so you can ask to find the box here where it read and it will tell you where it read those characters from so you know what it's trying to read it doesn't have to be English for example the highway sign could be in Korean like this and then you ask this is Korean and then go and find it it will try to find that box and it will draw for you where that is and here it is I didn't show you what it found so I'd like to show you what it found all I have to do is do without this box here and it will show you these are the characters it found which is correct in the part that it identified as characters I have shown you a lot but this is just the tip of the iceberg of what this machine learning can do so please join me on this hands-on machine learning course and use your own pictures to see this amazing results